Hey guys. Um, so back at the power wall and uh, things are kind of working pretty well now. The BMS is monitoring fine, um, balance things out nicely. And the little extra touches I've done about balancing above a certain voltage and everything are working pretty well. So quite happy with that. And the inverter's working well now, producing power, I'm not getting the interference. So everything's great there. Um, but there's one thing I've been lacking is that to know the output um, of the inverter and how it's going. Um, at the moment, I've got a fixed um, at a, about 150 watts, um, which is below the rest and usage of my house. So I know that I'm gonna not going to export anything back to the grid. Um, this does come with a CT clamp that I'm going to install, but I just need to make an extension cable. So there'll be a new video um, in the coming weeks about that as well. Um, so when that is working, that's going to be variable that amount. So I'm not always going to know it's 150 watts. And it would just be nice to get a at a glance view in Grafana just to know what the usage is throughout the day. Because um, at the moment, it's um, all I can see is the output um, that's being used on the charge controller. Uh, which is the garage lights and a few other miscellaneous things. Um, so I think as I've shown earlier in previous videos, the output is quite disjointed in, in the form of what's been produced and what's been used. Um, so this video is about how I got around that issue and that was to install a ACS 712 current monitor. Um, I have been told there is a newer one out, the ACS 720, but I can't find any boards with it. And I think either there's a lot of surplus or there's a lot of fabs still pumping these out. And so the ACS 712 is um, the more popular one and you can get it extremely cheaply at the moment. Um, so you might ask, what is that? And that's basically a, um, a small system of chip and it's a um, little eight pin chip and then it has three pin header. You feed it five volts um, so you've got a positive and a negative, and then you've got the sense wire, um, and then you've passed through the negative um, of the um, what you're trying to measure, basically. So I have the inverter hooked up directly to the battery because that's a recommended way of doing it um, by the charge controller manufacturer. Technically, I'm not going to use more than 30 amps, which is the limit of the charge controller, but it is still advised to have it hooked up directly. So I do have that in place. Um, the positive goes through a breaker here, um, and so then I fed the negative through this, um, and I've kind of jury rigged, and I've kind of just fixed everything from being jury rigged, but I've gone back to that at the moment, just temporarily. Um, in all honesty, I'm not sure how long I'll be able to make this cable before I get issues, um, but yeah, so that's in there temporarily. I'll maybe swap these devices down to here, as I mentioned in the previous video, um, and then I'd be able to get much better access to the BMS as well. Um, but yeah, and it's just here, it's installed, it's done. I've updated the code, that's on GitHub. So without further ado, I'll switch to the PC and then I'll show you the changes I had to make and how that looks in Grafana. We're at the PC and I just want to show first of all the type of module we're looking at. So as I mentioned earlier, it's the ACS 712 um, and they come in different ranges. So if I scroll up here, you can get between a 5 amp, a 20 amp and a 30 amp choice. Now that does limit the application of this to 30 amp there. Um, I believe the ACS 720 does go up to 66 amp. Um, but if you need more than that, if your power wall is pushing a lot more, um, it's two things to that. You can either look at something like a shunt um, and configure that up um, or in all honesty, if you're pushing something that hard, you maybe are looking at the more professional options like Batrium or something like that. Um, but yeah, so this is the type of thing on eBay. I'll place a link below just to the search so you can get these type of things. Um, what I will do is I'll just very quickly switch to the machine here. I'm gonna be slightly off camera, so I do apologize. Um, so yeah, so you can get the, this is two variants I have, which is the 20 amp here. Uh, which has these kind of style connectors uh, which are, are screwed on there and this is the 30 amp connector which is slightly larger and it's quite nice it's got two screw holes um, and I must admit I was a bit of a, an idiot when I saw these on Julian Eilert's and um, Adam Welch's channel um, and they seem to have a different variant and I just couldn't figure it out and then when they actually arrived it's like ah okay <laughs> It looks like that, and it's because the module that arrives, it's kind of optional whether you um, want to solder on this terminal. Um, and on the one that I showed in the garage, I haven't soldered that on. 
and I've just left these terminals here um, and then just done some circle connectors and just bolted those together and that worked much better for myself um, especially with larger gauge wire because with something like this a 30 gauge wire that's going to be fairly beefy you're talking at least four millimeter squared um, and you'd maybe struggle to get it in there so it was nice to crimp it in a connector and do it in that fashion so that's the two here um, I did do ex some experimenting in the house um, and like I mentioned this is a 20 amp one I have um, in Frankenstein this one a little bit and this was after watching Julian Eilert's video which I'll place a card to here um, and place a link below as well in in his observations it was better to put an additional cap on um, and that seemed to smooth out the reading somewhat I haven't done it on this one um, I just kind of haven't haven't had to so far but that's maybe something to consider so it's definitely worth checking out Julian's uh, video there so the fairly simple devices as I mentioned um, earlier in the video um, you've got three pins here which you have for um, the data line uh, VCC and ground now these are all 5 volt variants so that's something to be aware of if you're using it with a ESP based chip um, more than likely it's going to be 3.3 volt tolerant so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to um, have a resistor um, something like 180k um, to pull that down to the 3.3 volt that is going to be needed from the um, the pin now I believe the Wemos um, analog pin which is it only has one which is A0 is 5 volt compliant but the readings are going to be all out um, so you want to scale that down to something that I can expect anyway so that's just something to keep in mind um, and look for your particular board because you could be using a node MCU or something else for your controller so just to say that that's definitely worth looking into um, and if I switch back to the PC um, so the way I've implemented this in the um, in the BMS as with most things I've done I've tried to be sympathetic because um, the gentleman that designed this Stuart um, Pitaway he did a fantastic job um, so I've expanded again the um, the, the sentence dialogue um, and I've separated out to have an inverter sentence and you can basically just set this to one um, or off as you want um, and then save that um, and that's the only thing you're going to see in the interface at all in the the web interface anyway um, and then if you enable that what it's going to do it's going to push a new value to Grafana now I've only enabled this in Grafana I'm not using the um, Emon CMS um, but if someone wants to do that or wants to work with me and I can send them some test code we can certainly do that um, but I don't have a system to test so it's quite hard um, but as you can see here um, it pulls it in so where we have the, the um, cells and then the field um, there's those individual cell values that you would need to set here so say where cells where cell equals one but for this it's at the top level so is the same as the battery balancing you have the inverter usage and you can set that um, and then the options you need to set that it, it's amps I've done it at two decimal places and you'll see here that my inverter has not been used um, so if we come back out to here um, I'll back out of here that way yeah so that gives you that value now the only thing I have been thinking is that I've done it as amps um, and I'm not sure that's the most useful thing to output generally when I'm looking um, I want to see what the um, the wattage is that's being used um, so what I might do is because we know the um, the pack voltage and uh, we know the amperage that's been used by the inverter and um, so we can con calculate the, um, the, the the watt hours that's been used um, so I may change this instead of amps to be watt hours but you know if anyone's got any comments on that you know stick it down below we're gonna have a chat about it um, I could do both um, but I think for myself um, maybe do it as watt hours um, and the reason I'd probably do it in the BMS is that the BMS is sampling the voltage um, uh, a hell of a lot more um, in it would be nigh on instantaneous here that you know exactly what the cell voltage is because you can add all the module voltages up um, 
on. And I could just post that there. Now, like I say, I think it's better doing it there than doing it in Grafana, which does have the same information directly from the charge controller, but you're kind of measuring two things in two different places. And I think it would be better to, because you, you have in the BMS, the voltage, and you also have the amperage used by the inverter. I think it'd be better to do the calculation there, post that to Grafana. Um, so that's probably the way I'm gonna go, but like I say, any comments, stick it down below. Um, so that's basically what it's gonna look like. Um, amps at the moment, could be what I was in the future, and or both of them, it doesn't do any harm. It's not gonna fill the database up. Um, so that's what you're gonna see in Grafana. So the way I started this is to, I had an ACS 712 um, uh, test um, sketch, um, and I'll post link this sketch as well if anyone finds it useful because you could use this code in your any other projects that you wish. Um, this is being a complete mash together. Is lots of different um, projects and code samples I've seen in data sheets and bits and pieces. So there's not one place I could attribute it to. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different uh, bits and pieces in here. So as I mentioned earlier, the Wemos has a single um, analog input, and that's A0. So we define that here, and we assign the name of if sensor um, in. Um, the millivoltage per amps. Now this is an important one because it depends what your um, type of module you're using, either the 5 amp, the 20 amp, or the 30 amp. And this is specifically for the ACS 712, as I mentioned earlier. So, and I'm using the, um, uh, this, the test sketch, I was using the 20 amp. Um, so that would be the 66 there for the 30 amp module. And I'll just put a comment in there so you can set it to whatever you're doing. Um, the third variable we've got here is the ACS 712 shift. Um, what I did find was when I was doing readings, um, it depends on the, the cable length um, and a few of the variables, cable gauge and other bits and pieces, um, that comes from the sensor as to how accurate it is that you're getting. Um, so the best way to do it is to have nothing connected um, and then you can take your readings. Um, the way it works is that it should be between 0 and 1024 uh, because you can technically do negative say 30 amps and positive 30 amps um, and then 512 would be a uh, mid reading so if you're getting a reading say 520 you know that you um, the reading is 8 out so you can put it in there and for myself when I was doing my testing it was 22 and um, so what you need to do is it's fair enough doing that in testing but then you need to measure it in situ um, so there for myself it worked out to be 22 that was over and you could put a negative value in there that would um, work it out as well. So this is a, just a really handy test sketch. Um, the setup, we're just setting the board rate, outputs a serial monitor, um, and then in the loop, um, we're basically, the voltage is equal to get VPP, which is this function here. Um, and then we're doing a series of calculations here, um, just to work out, and this is the, key thing that I mentioned earlier um, is part of the calculation and that way you need to know what the, the millivolts per amp the resolution is basically. Um, the higher the resolution, so going up with 30 amp, it's less accurate. Um, so it's better with a 5 amp module, but of course that's dictated by your pack size, your inverter, and how much current you're drawing basically. Um, so just something to take heed of there. And then we're just going to output that and delay 1000 uh, milliseconds so a, a second there. Um, and then in the actual get VPP function, um, basically what we're doing here is sampling through for um, taking 1000 samples um, and then just taking the um, the average readings there. Um, and we just do that rather than take one single reading, it's not going to be as accurate. So what we need to do is go through the 1000 readings and get that average and then we can return that as a result and then we can use that as part of the function just to work out what the um, the amperage is that's being used by the inverter. So like I say, I'll place a link to this um, project. I may just stick on Dropbox or something, it's not worth a GitHub. Um, so we've got that. And then what I did was I took the, that code 
And once I knew it was working and proved, because I didn't want to put it in, it, it, it's a hell of a size program. So um, I didn't want to just kind of wedge it in there. But once I knew it was working, I've went through um, and I've put all these settings in. Um, so I went over these ones prior. Um, and then I've also included one invert, uh, invert uh, monitoring um, as well. And then basically, the crux is I've had to add the the items to the um, the web interface as I mentioned. Um, but then what I do do is that we check if the um, if that option is enabled in the web interface, and if it is, it'll go. It'll get the voltage. Um, it'll work that out, um, and then that's stored. And then when you call the um, the influx db post data it'll post it there um, so if i go into the um, web services submit um, and this part corresponds and again we've got another if statement just to see if the invert mon is enabled we're going to post that to um, grafana so basically only if you check that um, that box or the the slide um, in the web interface it's going to post it grafana if it's not enabled then it's not going to bother posting it because there's no need and it, it, it's not for everyone um and that largely is it there was a few extra bits and pieces that i had to enable so yeah there was a, um just a few extra settings that needed to be added in and uh, one of them being the um invert mon enabled which gets stored in the e prom settings um i initially did have when i mentioned earlier on a setting at the top here which was the um, invert them on equal force, but in the end, that's kind of deprecated. I didn't end up using that. Um, ended up using it in here, and then that gets stored in the AEB prom. So then, if the device reboots, um, it's going to continue from where it was, and you're not going to kind of lose that um, monitoring um, in that time frame where you connect in, realize it's not set. So it made sense to just store it in the um, AE prom. Um, so that's largely it. Um, the settings there. Um, like I say, if you want to use this code in another project, feel free. Um, but for me, this seems to be working now. And the reason I did it this way is I'm, you may be able to do it with the, um, the, the grid time inverter I have, um, but there's not much information, not many resources out there. So that's going to take me a while to do. But by doing it in this manner as well, it also makes it pretty generic so that you can do this for any inverter. It doesn't matter which inverter it is. Um, off the back of doing this, it did highlight that um, there is one other option we could maybe um, put in place, which is to have a relay for a low voltage cutout. Um, that was also mentioned when I was talking to Adam Welch as well as a, um, a potential option. Um, and in doing that way um, with a relay, that means that it doesn't matter um, which model of inverter you're using, where you've got control of it or not. So you could be using something like what I, the GTL I'm using. Um, you could be using the EP ever that Adam's using. You could just be using an off the shelf bog standard one, um, but you would still be able to set that low cutoff. Um, so then you're kind of covering most avenues. You know, you've got the BMS that's working and balancing the battery. You've kind of got a top balancing of sorts. Um, although I know that's limited by a power resistor, that value that you're using, but you still have that top balancing and um, so it's hot you're controlling a little bit what over voltage um, and then you just kind of got that under voltage protection a little bit so that's something I may consider and um, I don't need that at the moment with my GTL inverter um, but it wouldn't be too hard to use another pin on the Wemos and then we could set it so that um, an option in the web interface and set it cut out the only bad part about doing that is that generally, say like in my configuration, you have a link for the inverter and you have a link for the um, the charge controller. Um, that may require two relays then to cut that out. Um, but if anyone's got any suggestions on that and a better way to achieve it, you know, feel free to stick a comment down below. Um, so yeah, guys, so that's um, pretty much it. I think I hopefully I've covered everything. Um, and I hope that's of help to someone. Um, as I say, if I help one person, that's always enough for myself. So um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please feel free to like, subscribe, and uh, catch you later. Bye.